Hey guys, Clumsy here and uh, welcome back to ATS. I've been doing a lot of offline driving recently in ATS, really enjoying it, so I thought I would uh, take you guys along for the ride and we can do some Q&A and stuff. Yeah, just enjoy the trip. We are currently driving our W900 long, W900L, the same one from the previous Clumsy Trucking stream, also with the trailer, the trailer that came from Keith, the Trail King. And right now we're hauling a case tractor 721F 21 tons we are currently in uh, where are we Tonopa Tonopa in Nevada and making our way through Las Vegas crossing over to Arizona and eventually reaching New Mexico in Tucumcari it's a bit long, 966 miles, so it might take two episodes, but yeah, I actually started not here. I started way back in the Dallas, I think, in Oregon. I can't remember how you pronounce that, but yeah. And I've been uh, traversing all the states. Well, I kind of missed California in this trip, but yeah, I've been doing a lot of long trips recently. Really enjoying it, listening to audiobooks and stuff, but... I'll take you guys with me and we uh, do some Q&A action. <laughs> first things first though, I have to fix my truck. Look at all the damage here. So there are a couple of tricky highways here in Nevada. I've been uh, going through some state roads, I think. Yeah, this one in particular. 376. 376 South is what I was traversing. And there are a couple of very aggressive bends there. That if you don't, if you just stick to the speed limit, it can get you in trouble. So, not a very good idea. You have to really slow down in some of them and I realized too late. So, couple of accidents, couple of 13% <laughs> on the truck and then trailer, I think. But the cargo itself remains undamaged, interestingly enough. This is like the toughest tractor ever. Now this truck, if you haven't seen the stream, has a pretty cool feature aside from having like a little house inside that humongous truck actually has a reverse cam when you turn on the hazards Granted, you have to turn that on in the options, but uh, yeah, that's one of the very unique features that comes with most of uh, Dimitri's trucks It helps a bit. It's not enough to give you the entire perspective, so you'll still need to uh, consult your mirrors and look behind and stuff, but it's a good start. It's especially useful for coupling, but you can also use it when reversing like this. Just reverse here properly and we'll be on our way. Alright, are we close? I think we're close to hitting something at the back, so let's move forward already. I'm gonna turn that off. This is a very nice truck. All the buttons, all the dials are working. Feels very immersive. Every key you press has a corresponding animation. Like if you turn on the lights, you can see those switches flicking. You see? Like for the headlights and everything. Wait a minute, let me zoom in. That one, yeah, the retarder, the engine brake, the uh, reverse cam as you saw a while ago, that one, very nice, very nice. There are a couple of uh, minor things that I don't like though, but they are, as I mentioned, minor things which I can let go. So overall, very beautiful truck and very unique experience as well, hauling this humongous truck we did a comparison at the, at the end of the stream how large this truck is and it's like double or triple the length of a normal truck of a normal of a day cab it's insane but it's very comfy and whenever i want to sleep i can just uh, go to the back and uh, lie down on the sofa i don't know if that's a sofa bed or something we do have our trusty dog there just sitting and behaving enjoying the ride so you guys just 
do the same. Enjoy the ride and uh, I'll try not to uh, crash into things as much as possible. No promises though, no promises. Also, I've been practicing my floating gears that is shifting without the need of uh, the clutch, but it's not very smooth as you guys heard. Still a bit of gear grinding in there. Slow down. Nah, not going to make it. Are we? Oh, just when I stopped. I'll have to take a photo later. Okay, let, let me try floating before I answer any questions. Let me show off. Yeah, there we go. That's the smoothest one. So no clutch at all. Just matching revs. Yeah, a bit of gear grinding in there though. Still haven't really caught the concept quite well. Also, I am using quite a bit of mods, as you guys might remember. We are using SIP's real traffic density mod, so the traffic is more full, more accurate when it comes to the, depending on the type of road, time of day, all that stuff, and just more vehicles overall. It feels very immersive when you're on the highway when you're doing long haul trips like these. So I highly recommend it. Also, it, I have enabled the real AI traffic sounds also from SIM. Very nice. You get to hear the engine more for the cars outside. Instead of just hearing the wind, more or less. Like that, when they're passing by. That's floating gears. No gear grinding. That doesn't happen often try and slow down here. Whenever I see those chevrons, I start getting worried already that I might be too fast for my speed. Even if it's a 70, km, 70 miles per hour, I don't trust that anymore. So whenever I see these signs, bent, approaching, try to slow down a little, better safe than sorry, right? I also look at my GPS to see, to see if that's a sharp curve up ahead. But yeah, it's been a very cool experience just doing these long hauls. I don't, I didn't realize, but if you've watched the stream, apparently I have been driving all this time with the job distance limit set to 500. That means all the jobs that are being generated are only up to 500 miles distance maximum. That's why I never get to see these long haul trips. Now that I've removed that limitation, so I set that before in the console and I forgot about it. Now that I've removed that limitation, then uh, it's uh, all thousand mile jobs now coming up. And this one is, I can't remember, 1700 or something. But yeah, it's been pretty enjoyable watching or listening to audiobooks and uh, I'm actually listening to a one of the my fa one of my favorite authors. So I'm reading a fiction audiobook now. Listening to a fiction audiobook. It's called Oathbringer. It's uh, written by Brandon Sanderson, my favorite fantasy author, and uh, it's a very good book so far. It's my first time listening to an audiobook that is fiction. And it's quite interesting how it works. Normally, the, the audiobooks I listened to before were all non-fiction, so they were more like educational in purpose. This one is purely recreational. Just being immersed in a story, someone telling you a story while you're driving, it's like perfect. It's amazing. And the, the author is such a good writer, you can really imagine what he's describing. No fancy words, no uh, complicated sentences, just very easy to understand, very straightforward, but gets the job done and gets you to really imagine what he wants to convey. So I've been really enjoying driving and listening. Anyway, so I thought of doing a Q&A in this setting. Usually we're playing ETS too, but now I think I want to do a bit of ATS. I don't know. I am very much into driving in the wide and uh, large American roads for a change. So 
give this to me, alright? Anyway, let's go and proceed with the Q&A. We ended last time in the e- last ETS2 episode. Don't ask me what that is. But if you look at the, the list of videos in the channel, you can see which was the last ETS2 episode before this one. That's the last Q&A. And also you can search for the Q&A tag. Like open and close brackets. Q ampersand A. And you'll get a list of all the episodes which have Q&A in them. Which are where I answer questions from you guys. So the last one is the ETS2 episode. This next one, this current one, we are starting off with Jay's questions, number 8. So he had 10 questions from me. So he asks, if you were to spend a day with any celebrity, who would you want to spend it with? And there's like a note here. Don't tell me someone from the Gossip Girls. (laughs) My favorite series, surprisingly. And no one is more surprised than Jay. He really can't believe it. And he's always <laughs> commenting about that. <laughs> but that's fine, that's fine. It's a very uh, unorthodox uh, series to be my favorite. But it is. Okay, anyway, that's not the question. So no, I'm not much of a... To be honest, I'm not much of a celebrity fan guy. Like, I maybe I just can't remember, but I don't remember. Yeah, I don't remember any celebrity I was such a huge fan of that like it's like I want to be like be part of their fan club or um, how do you say get involved with their daily life. For me, I like I like the actor, I like the actress, but usually it's just like up to that point for me. Like I like your acting and I like your role and I like how you portray this role, but I, it's not like I want to hang out with you. You know, something like that but it's a different thing when it comes to youtubers so I think I'll answer that way like I don't feel a personal connection to actors and actresses because they're doing their jobs right and uh, really playing a role but when it comes to youtubers it's a different thing because they like like me like I, I share a part of my true personality with you guys so what you see is usually more authentic definitely more authentic than what the actors and actresses portray because they are always playing a role and so if I were to choose I'd probably choose my favorite youtuber which is do you guys remember it's Kiralis some of you guys say that I'm actually Kiralis <laughs> oh, look at that triple trailer only in Nevada oh now nowadays I think it also appears in Oregon I can't remember but yeah, I would probably choose Kiralis because like, I was really like super addicted at one time with his videos watching all his series Minecraft uh, all the different games City Skylines ETS2 just a very light-hearted guy very happy-go-lucky not too serious very positive looking and uh, just seems like a real genuine nice guy and uh, it would be nice to hang out and like get to know him more you know so yes that would be my answer definitely Canales would be number one in that spot he would be my celebrity of choice if you could call him that I guess you could call him that he has like over a million subscribers in YouTube uh, last time I checked it was like 1.7 probably now I don't know if it reached 2 million or something already this guy is the slowest ever. I'm not sure if... Uh, hmm. Maybe you don't see this triple trailer normally in AI. Maybe this is part of Sipinho's modifications with the traffic. Maybe he unlocked them. I would think so. But this guy is really slow. Like we're traveling at like 30 miles. 35 miles per hour. And we're catching up to him already. Maybe it just needs a bit of space to really accelerate and stuff. Oh, and before I proceed, how do you guys... Uh, I haven't seen it yet, I'm still recording this the same day, but how do you guys like the, the rail valley? Thanks again to Alex for recommending that to me. That was totally off my radar. Thank you for spotting that, that's an amazing game. I actually am liking that a lot more than the Train Simulator 
franchise because it's so immersive and it I like the the universe. It's like ATS or ATS2, but instead of driving a truck, you're driving a train. Because there are industries, there are jobs, you can be part of the whole world, and you can progress, get more licenses, get more money, unlock new trains, and stuff like that. And it's only in early access, so I'm really looking forward to what the game has to offer. So let me know what you think there, okay? And I hope you guys are enjoying it, because I am planning to do a lot more episodes in there. My goodness, we really have to overtake this guy. But there's so much oncoming traffic, I don't think I can do it. Uh, one sec, one sec. Maybe now that there are two lanes, I hope he turns on that uh, next stop. Okay, I think he's picking up speed. That's good. Alright, let's move on. Next question, if you wanted to build a treehouse, how will you design it? What would it look like and what will be inside it? That's a very interesting question. I never thought of that. Okay, let's let this guy pass and then let's overtake. Ah, oh, there's someone more. Okay, now we can do it. Go, go, go! Oh, isn't this the worst? Two trucks overtaking each other. And they're like one mile difference, one mile per hour difference on their speed. It takes like ages for them to overtake each other. Oh, not, not in our case though. Not in our case. There you go. Now we're not on the proper highway. 80 mile speed limit. Awesome. I think this is the highest ever in all the states I've seen. Most of them have like 75. In California, it's only 55. But in Nevada, it's 80. These guys are pretty relaxed in their speed limits. Okay, good. So treehouse. I'm not really familiar how to build a treehouse, what to put in it. But if it's possible, I, I'll put a, uh, a gaming PC in there. Maybe soundproof it. <laughs> So I can stream, I can record without interference from the outside world and I can hang out with you guys and uh, not be disturbed. Yeah. Maybe that would be a nice like sanctuary for after work and stuff. Slow down. Approaching a city looks like. Yeah, city limit. Indian, what, bridge? Maybe you should start enabling the other map mods for ATS. I only have Coast to Coast enabled right now and I, I know there are a lot of uh, cities expansion was it? Well, was one? Something about I-10 or something? Yeah, I, I don't really... I'm not as familiar with it as I am with the ATS2 mods. So if you have suggestions on what to add on Coast to Coast, let me know, okay? List them out in the comments so I can try them out. I think city's expansion is definitely a must-have. What else? You guys let me know. And now we are... I can't remember, but I think they added a... a bypass on Las Vegas, so you don't have to go through the city. But you can actually continue on the highway, which is how it should be anyway. I can't remember if they did that really. Okay, let's slow down a bit because we are turning right here. down a bit. Stop sign up ahead. Okay, let's just cruise along here. Oh, don't hit that guy. Trailer brake. And use low gear so we don't make the engine die at all. Are we good there? Yes, we're good. I think we're passing through Vegas though, so maybe that bypass lane isn't there yet. Maybe I just imagined it. Or maybe it's part of a mod. Maybe it's part of City's expansion, I can't remember anymore. It's been a while. So yeah, the treehouse. <laughs> Going back to the question, the treehouse will be something like uh, a man cave. Because I have no clue what to put in a normal treehouse, so I'll just make it a an ideal man cave for me. 
What is the biggest doubt I have? Hmm. That's the next question from Jay. Last question from Jay, that is. Biggest doubt I have. It's probably in the future. Anything that has to do in the future. Because I, as, I, as I mentioned to you guys before, I'm very present looking. I don't look at the past. I have very bad memory because of it. I'm not sentimental. And I don't plan ahead so much as well. So I, I like to stay in the present and, and enjoy the moment. But I think I do that too much sometimes that I don't really... I don't uh, plan enough and think about the future enough and uh, like I just go with the flow basically, which can be a bad thing. So if I worry about something, that would probably it. I'm a short-term planner, so long-term I have no idea what's going to happen. That's always a bit of a doubt there. Maybe I should be planning more, but who knows? We'll see. Is this a... Can I do a left turn here? Yeah, I guess so. There's just not... There's just no, like, dedicated left turn signal. You're on your own. Yeah, that's one of the bugs here, if you guys noticed. The destination is popping up there. That's one of my pet peeves with GPS units. But actually, it's like 700 miles away still. So... Not really, f not really near. It's just buggy. Okay, where am I going here? Um, the highway? Not really. I think I'm going straight through. Let me have a look. Yeah, we're really like going through Vegas. Not the most uh, economical that means we'll be faced with, with a lot of uh, traffic lights and uh, speed limits will be low we'll have to do a lot of stop and go that's fine clumsy trucker right there at least we'll get to enjoy a bit of vegas do we have to turn right anywhere yes but not here very nice here I'm not even sure what is part of the original map and what is part of the mods anymore. I think everything is part of the original map, but the signs have been changed to reflect the real life names. Normally there would be like fake names to not get problems with the copyright, but in this case I think one I think one of my mods changes that maybe the maybe p16's 3d logos i don't really know it is getting dark bit by bit i think we'll have to stop soon let's see eta is 15 hours we have 29 hours left before the job is tagged as late so we have plenty of time actually so we can just enjoy and chill But yeah, that's my biggest doubt. If I'm doing enough for my long-term wellness together with Mrs. Clumsy. But yeah, I think this kind of living is something that uh, more people can put more focus into. Like instead of... I would rather be too present-looking than too forward-looking. Because sometimes you plan too much, you forget to enjoy what's right in front of you. And I'd rather enjoy it fully than plan ahead too much. But uh, of course, the ideal thing would be some somewhere in the middle, a bit of a balance. That's a work in progress. I try to plan, but not a very good long-term planner. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay squeeze in here hope I don't hit anybody I think I hit something oh yeah there we go it's a bit too close to that railing um, oops just tagged it a bit there no worries 
no worries, just normal clumsy trucking. Nothing to see here. <laughs> Very nice realistic trailers. I'm not even sure where that's coming from. I think that's Sizzles. Might be Sizzles. Yeah, most probably. Oh, there we go. Our turn. Good. So thank you for the questions, Jay. Let's move on to Grace's questions. He had a lot of questions for me as well. Let's see. Okay, first one. Heard you had a thousand screenshots in ETS2. Can you please make a video? It's less of a less of a question and more of a request. Make a video in which you slideshow all the screenshots from all the games, as well as watch your very old videos. And uh, uh, ah, yeah, I remember that you had that uh, request before. So yes, I do have a lot of screenshots, but most of them, well, many of them, I share with you guys. If you guys check out my Facebook page. Facebook.com slash the clumsy geek gaming, I think, is the URL. And if you go to the photos, you'll see each clumsy trucking session, the photos are actually uploaded there. So if you want to take so to, uh, to have a look at the photos, you can easily have it there. I don't think I'll be doing a specific slideshow video for it, it might get very repetitive. And also, the the other one, the watching like the initial videos will make me cringe for sure. One because of my driving skills. Not that I'm much more improved now, but still. <laughs> and two because of my commentary maybe. But uh, yeah, as I mentioned, I'm not a very backward looking guy. So I don't tend to do that sentimental stuff. But I understand it might be very interesting to some people. It's just that personally I'm not such a huge fan of the looking back. I tend to forget easily and I tend to be lazy at looking back. I always want to be looking at the present. But if anyone wants to do it, I remember Rohan was wanting to do Hoover Dam. Hoover Dam, yes. There we go. And welcome to Arizona. There we go. So. I remember Rohan was trying to make like a compilation video at times of the clumsy trucking moments. I think there might have been too many clumsy trucking moments to compile. But yeah, you guys are free to do so. And uh, just let me know if you're interested in doing that. I am totally open to you guys. But myself, yeah, I think I'm too lazy to do it. I think I would have a hard time compiling and uh, watching back. It's not in my nature to look back so much, unfortunately. But the beauty of that night driving, the the light flares from the different vehicles makes things so much re more realistic than the default. You know how dark it is at night. The, lint, the light flares are coming from foggy weather. Still in closed beta, unfortunately. But yeah, when it comes out, man, you guys will enjoy it for sure. Let's move to the left here. These guys are a bit slow. There you go. Alright. Next question from Grace. What made your channel name Clumsy? Okay, so what what was how did it come become clumsy? Alright. So it's originally the Clumsy Geek, right? Clumsy Geek is from uh, well I was thinking of what to name the channel, not very creative guy, so I thought of some adjectives to describe me properly. <gasps> that looks like a very sharp bend, I think we'll have to slow down there. Otherwise, it might be a recipe for disaster. Yeah, I see some chevrons, we have to be very careful about this. There we go, that's how you approach a bend. Oops. Maybe move to the right. I don't think I need to overtake anymore. Good. So it's very dark, and we'll have to uh, sleep in a way in a bit. I 
think, how far are we away? Yeah, we're not even halfway there. So we'll probably spend like 40 to 40 minutes to an hour and then we'll continue in the next episode, right? Way station. Dang it. Knew it. Never lucky, these things. That's fine. So we'll have to stop over and uh, go to the weighing scale, otherwise we'll get some penalties for it. So we'll exit through here. So yeah, it's originally Clumsy Geek. I thought of some adjectives that best describe me. That uh, don't seem very like, you know, so a bit of funkiness, a bit of different... Uh, something unique about me, something different about me. And something that doesn't feel like boastful. So I thought, yeah, I'm perfectly clumsy. And I am kind of a geek at times. Maybe not only at times. So why not combine both? Thus was born Clumsy Geek. From there, that's why that's where the CG logo comes from. And from there, people were kind of confused what to call me. Some were calling me CG, some were calling me Clumsy, some were calling me Geek. And I was thinking maybe it would help if we had like a uniform, like if everyone would immediately know what to call me and not be confused. So I, uh, so it's still the Clumsy Geek officially. But then you see, if you see in YouTube, it's only clumsy now, so that it's easier to remember, and there would be no confusion what to call me. Like you can, all, you can call me CG or clumsy, but ideally it's clumsy. Yeah, it's just uh, the 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 smoothest. The how do you say the most optimal thing? <laughs> Maybe not optimal. Oh man, city limits in Arizona, 25 miles. I'm going to sleep first. I would want to sleep there, but there was no left turn. Hmm. Can I U-turn maybe? With this truck? Maybe not. Don't be too ambitious. <laughs> okay. Is there no rest area in here? I don't think so. Okay, let's move to the left lane. are going on the 40 40 east I believe that should be yeah that's 40 west on the right side we will be going on the left side look at the reflections on the, the ground beautiful isn't it it's so real turn here one sec let me just look at the map because uh, there might be a rest area up ahead indeed let's go there yes so we can sleep on the road as well that should be fine and uh, we'll just be taking 40 east all the way until Tucumcari crossing over to New Mexico in the process yeah let's pass through here so we can rest and uh, we can explore again when it's uh, daytime. All right. So that is the history of the clumsy channel name. What made you, or what or who motivated you to play ATS ETS2? So I, I mentioned this a couple of times before, but I know there are a couple of new friends around, so I think we'll go with that story again. Sorry for those who have heard this already before, but. Maybe it won't be too bad, right? So it all started off with the release of ATS. And uh, Kiralis, who I mentioned a while ago, was my favorite YouTuber. He had a giveaway. So he, he was part of the promoters for ATS. And back then, I had absolutely no idea why anyone would play a truck simulator. Back in my side of the world, trucks were not meant to be fawned over. Like you don't go at the truck and say, wow, that's beautiful. You say, wow, that's humongous and it blocks my way. And it's a traffic hazard. That's generally the thought when you think about trucks from where I am from. So I had absolutely no interest in trucks at all, but Kiralis was doing an, an ATS giveaway. So I was like, okay, well, it's free to join a giveaway. 
then I just try it, you know? And then I won. I won the giveaway. I was one of the winners. And so I got a free copy of ATS. Actually, it's very timely, this question. Thank you, Grace, for this question because uh, it just passed ATS's uh, third birthday. So ATS's uh, release date. It's been three years since ATS released. And three years since I won my copy. So three years since I started playing ATS. And we could say it's been three years since I started my ATS trucking in general journey so yeah that's how I got started with it I got a free copy of ATS because you know you guys know how cheap I am I don't really like I don't want to buy games too much I like usually spend it somewhere else so when I had the chance to get a free game I jumped on it and I won it Hmm, this might not be the best parking with this kind of trailer, but the guys will give us a pass, I guess. Okay, turn off the wipers, turn off the engine. I'll see you guys in the morning. I'll continue this in the morning. A bit of a cliffhanger in there. Good night. Oh, the beautiful pitter patter of rain just helps me with the relaxation. We'll get a good night's sleep here. I'll stay inside my house now. Very dark. With our dog. Okay. Ah, beautiful. Well rested. Yeah. Cool jacket there. Biker jacket. Microwave. Cereal. Get some breakfast. Feed our dog. Couple of beers from the night. Monster drinks and whatnot. Anyway. Let's continue. Okay. Good. So, what was I talking about again? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Ah, yes, so I won a copy of ATS. And I tried it. And I immediately fell in love with it. It's like, wow. Like, this is so curious. Like, driving a truck, I, I never imagined it to be so interesting. Because the, the, the idea of parking your trailer, reversing it, maneuvering it, like so, is so unique. Oh, I'm going to hit that thing. I never thought that it could be so complicated and so exciting to learn how to do it. And so what got me hooked initially was, I guess, number one is the parking, learning how to park, learning how to drive a truck. And two is the actual driving experience because I have been living in Singapore then already and I could not drive my own car because cars are super expensive here. Only the locals and the super rich people are able to buy their own cars so I was craving a bit of driving and uh, it was like the perfect driving experience, the most realistic I've seen so far. And the goal is not to like race or do some fancy stuff. It's just to enjoy the drive and uh, deliver things. There's a bit of progression there. That is really what I like. The fact that you can like, level up and improve and uh, explore more in the process. This is perfect. And so I started with a keyboard and mouse. Like a week later, I think I bought an Xbox 360 controller for it. Then a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Then I... Mrs. Clumsy bought me the steering wheel and a few months after that, I bought my Track IR. Oh, nothing happened. Nothing to see here. It's a bit heavy. Fort East, and that's the way. One sec, I think we can take a photo somewhere. I'm not sure if we'll be able to see uh, a nice bridge somewhere. So maybe we'll take a photo on the highway, right? Bear with me for a bit. What would be a nice angle? Maybe somewhere here. Oh, that looks beautiful. 
beautiful bend in there. There. Perfect. Okay, let's see how that looks. Is that... Yeah, that kind of works with the Range Rover on the side. Yes, kind of. Yeah, we can we can appreciate more of the truck here. Get a bit of a close up in there. And get one more that is wider. Like so. Maybe bend it a little more dramatic stuff. Yeah, that works. That also works. Good. Well, we are 40 minutes in. Yeah, I'm really enjoying this drive. So I'll probably stop somewhere in the 50 minute mark or one hour mark, we'll see. And we'll continue next episode. Let's make this a two part thing, right? Okay, so or maybe three parts even if it was if it's like Maybe that requires three parts because we were like 900 miles we covered 300 miles I don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes floating gears for the win okay, so yeah from there I, I slowly bought um, peripherals bought the track IR bought the SKR shifter not sure what I'm going to buy next but so far I haven't seen anything that would increase the overall experience that much that's not too heavy on the budget so currently I'm very happy with my setup but yeah that is how I got into ATS and that is how I got into trucking and mainly why I stayed is because of you guys so thank you guys for getting involved in the channel for really participating in the comments commenting joining the live streams you all really got me hooked into trucks like now when i look at trucks i have a newfound respect for it and uh let's just say really it changed my perspective learned a lot and st still learning a lot thanks to you guys without your support without your enthusiasm i probably would have stopped playing a long time ago but yeah so thank you guys for being here this is what makes me really enjoy doing these videos the communication the back and forth between us so thank you and looking forward to more All right thank you for that question grace I really love telling that story again and again because uh, it's really close to my heart and you know the origin stories are very interesting how each of us came up with something the series of random events that all resulted to where we are now all right Next question, how tall is your house in Singapore and Philippines in terms of stories? Hmm. What type of house do you like in terms of height? Well, I'm not really a rich guy, so I'm not sure if you would consider only my... Wait a minute, I have to slow down. Like my house in particular? It's only one story. I don't have like two stories, it's only for rich guys. <laughs> Nah, it depends, right? It depends. Nowadays, land, like, like the, how do you say, the um, land space, land area, is running out, especially in Singapore. So everybody is going up instead of going wider. So I guess I get where that's coming from. But uh, our house, like our family house when I was little, is a single-story house. It's a bit larger than usual, I think, in the Philippines because it's during the older times, yeah, the time of my parents where everyone could still afford a house and uh, land was not too expensive. 
Nowadays, owning land, really owning a house is something that is a luxury. Normally, people own condominiums, like units. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't really mind if it's like a a building that is like because there are like high-rise buildings and low-rise buildings, right? It depends on what type of environment you're in. If you, if the area you're in does not allow high-rise, then you will only see like up to 10 floors or something like that. But if it's high-rise, then it can go up to like 40, 60 stories and whatnot. But I don't really have a preference if I am at the low or a high place. I just don't want to be on the ground floor, on the first floor, right? in the lobby because there are some units that are there I feel like it's a bit too much invasion of privacy because everyone would be passing by that area on the way to the elevator or on the way to yeah but they'll be passing it by so I would rather be starting on the second floor upwards I'm okay either way I don't have a real like, major preference one advantage for being on the top floors is uh, it's probably less noisy in terms of the sounds from below right because you're farther up there but on one end it might also be a bit scary like what if the elevator is not working you would have to use the stairs and climbing 40 flights of stairs doesn't appeal to me that much so yeah that's one one downside but um, all in all I don't really mind but yeah, I don't think I can afford like two stories. It's not right now. I'm happy enough with one story. You know, the, the hard thing about having a large house is you have to clean a larger house. You have to maintain it. And if you can't maintain it yourself, you'll have to pay for the service, which is a bigger place. Means more place, more, more areas to clean and uh, more expensive overall. And if you don't really need a lot of space, why take something like that? So I've never been really like big on getting big houses. I'm like a more practical kind of guy. And since like I'm very happy enough with my PC, as long as it fits my PC, I have enough space for my PC, enough space to move around, I'm good enough. Maybe enough space to work out, yeah, so I don't have to like go outside and uh, go to the gym. Going to the gym is also good. Gets you more like in the mood to work out. Less lazy, less excuses. But yeah, that's a different topic altogether. But yeah, I like to keep it like as small as possible. Small enough that it's not a hassle to clean. And large enough that you don't feel too like deprived of real estate. So that's my ideal place. Next question is also from Grace. Um, how would you, what would you do if there is only one person near you and no other people around? And only ah, this is like a moral question. Around and that only one person's money fell off. The money is a thousand dollars USD. In that condition, you are super hungry and you don't have money. There's a restaurant half kilometer far. If you pick, he won't see it. Will you pick it yourself or give it to him? Okay, I see, I see. So definitely the right thing to do, and if I were to give a, the right answer for sure, I would give it back, right? But I mean, in reality, I don't know if this, uh, this applies to everybody, but myself, I can be selfish at times, especially if if you have that scenario where you're like really starving, like literally starving, like you'll die if you don't eat, then that might change your perspective a bit. That might change mine. I don't know. I don't want to experience it, but I'm saying I'm not a saint. So maybe, maybe I will keep it for myself. Or we could do it halfway, like return it, or maybe get a bit of the money and then return it, or return it really, and then maybe befriend him so maybe you can appeal to his good side and maybe he can feed you you guys can grab a, a meal together and uh, so you you make a friend and you also don't uh, do anything bad you know win-win 
But who knows what will happen when you do that. Maybe he will just run away, get scared of you. So it depends. It really depends. What I would do, hmm, I would probably try that approach. Right now, that's what I'm saying. I would probably try that approach of uh, returning his money, seeing if he gives me a reward. If he doesn't, then maybe hint at it or maybe like befriend him, make it subtle and uh, show that you're really starving and maybe he will be kind enough to give you something or maybe eat with you or something like that. That's what I'm saying right now, but when I'm really starving already, who knows, right? I just get the money and get it over with. Yeah, yes, it's, uh, let's be realistic here. Not everyone is a saint. And when you're in need, you need to do something. Like desperate times call for desperate measures. Isn't that the, me isn't that the saying? So, yeah, as much as I would like to return it, when things get really hectic, I'm not sure if I can preserve my, uh, what do you say? dignity maybe my integrity my principles I hope I can but I cannot promise it next question uh, what will be your reaction if you get 10,000 US dollars okay 441 miles left I think we can stop on the side and answer that question next time right well, let's see let's look at the map we can stop there. Yeah, that's perfect. We can stop there. And then continue in the next episode. Good. We have that pitch black sky again. That scary sky. It's weird. It only happens in ATS. It doesn't feel too natural to me. I would not like it so much. I would prefer a different skybox to be honest. I think I'll change it for next episode. The, the, the look behind is super cool. You don't really see it so much. You only see it in the mirrors, the clouds. In here, in front, you just see a gray sky. It's a bit too scary for my taste. Like something in a horror movie. Something in a zombie apocalypse kind of thing. <laughs> nah, nah, let's see. Let's see how that goes. Start breaking here. Breaking. And I think we need to refuel as well. So we will refuel and we will continue in the next episode, okay? Alright. Stop here. Nice. Well, thank you guys for hanging out with me. Please don't forget to hit the thumbs up button, hit the like button, comment, share with your friends. If you did like this video, we will continue in the next one doing some more Q&A, but I'm really enjoying this truck, really enjoying ATS and all these long haul drives. So stay tuned for the next episode, right? Thanks for watching, have a nice day, clumsy trucking, and I'll catch you in the next one. Wow. $731. 236 gallons, but that's actually very cheap. 3.1 diesel price is very cheap The others I've seen are like 3.4 3.6 in other areas. So it's actually pretty cheap in Arizona. Nice. All right Anyway, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Catch you in the next one. Bye-bye